What's up guys, Evan Jarvis here. In this video, you are gonna learn what hands make up 85% of profits in No Limit Hold'em, how to beat the average player, and what conclusions top pros in the world have gathered from extensive database analysis. Let's get stacking. Hey everybody, this is Alexander Fitzgerald, or Assassinato, doing one of my free webinars. Today is going to be a preview for my video series, Master Tournament Poker in One Class, my new video series, I may add. This preview episode is entitled Poker's Most Important Thing. I'm gonna say this is probably the most I've ever given away in a free episode, so I'm glad you're here, uh, you're here to take part. Now, the first question you're probably asking yourself is, can you really master poker in one class? Well, I'm gonna answer that with an anecdote, which should give you an idea of what I'm trying to do with this video series. Many people think I speak fluent Spanish, the truth is my vocabulary started with 200 words. So the first five years I was in Costa Rica, I did not speak Spanish well at all. Then one day, I don't remember why, but somebody said, look up the 200 most spoken words. It was a Tim Ferriss thing. And that makes up about 65, 70% of everyday Spanish conversation. Well, I looked up those 200 words and magically, I went from 200 words to 1,000, 2,000 really quickly. The reason for this is that once I knew the 200 basic words, I could start understanding other words based on the context. I saw what words went where, and based on the conversation, I started understanding what other words meant. Now, imagine being 15 years old and having a teacher make you do advanced algebra, but the same teacher never taught you multiplication or division. You are both the teacher and the student in this anecdote. You are forcing yourself to do plays in No Limit Hold'em, which should be left to the greatest players. Here's your multiplication, by the way. What player will you make the majority of your money from in No Limit Hold'em? We'll talk about that a bit more later. Why I am uniquely qualified to discuss this course. I have taught 1,000 plus students. The average student buys three to five hours of classes. In that time, they expect their tournament game to be completely reworked. And the more and more I taught this class, the more I was able to refine it. So something, one of the smartest things I ever learned from one of my teachers, because I do have to, this is what I do day to day. I, I made a decision. Uh, I never got in, to be quite frank with you, I never got into poker to be a great poker player. Uh, I think that's well and fine, a great goal. And I really admire people that love that. But I got into poker to make a living. And specifically specifically i wanted to be an entrepreneur that made a living uh, i never really put in that terms i just wanted to work for myself i actually the other day i didn't even know how to spell entrepreneur and when i decided to go into poker teaching because i found i was much better at that naturally than i am as a poker player even though i like my poker game i found myself to be a better coach uh i threw myself into it and I tried to learn from people who were teachers and one of the smartest teachers I met said, you know, the thing about teaching is it's not about the best teacher is not the teacher with the most wisdom. The best teacher is the teacher who can transfer the most wisdom. And that really opened my mind because I realized I wasn't being as good of a coach as I could be because what I was doing was trying to be, as wise as I could be myself and saying, you, you know, if you want to get this, you have to work, work, work and work and work the way I did when really, if I was any good at this, I should be able to teach you how to play pretty darn good tournament poker in three to five hours. So once I heard that, I sought out trying to figure out how to do that. And I figured it out in three and three to five hours, you can teach someone how to play really good no limit hold'em tournaments. Uh, I've come to learn that you can completely reprogram someone's understanding of no limit hold'em tournaments in that amount of time. Many times these players go on to do great things once they have the minimum effective dose understood. I have taught two number one pocket fivers, a number five pocket fiver, and a player of the year. A lot of this is the exact same. They use this stuff as well. Let's see if you know what they didn't know to start. What hand group makes up 85% of profits in Nullman Hold'em, 70 to 85%, but on a lot of distributions, it's 85% of profits.
All right, time is up. It's actually that top distribution right there at 8, 8 plus and ace, queen plus. Now, before we get into this, I want to clarify a little bit more what I mean by mastery. What I always want to be really clear about what my courses can do and can't do. Now, are you going to be playing high rollers with what I teach you? No, absolutely not. Are you going to be playing 10Ks at the Bellagio? No. Are you going to be able to beat a 2K, a 3.5K? WPT, a 2K WSOP, yes. You're going to be able to beat uh, majors online, yes. What I mean by mastery, obviously when I started playing poker, I, I mean teaching poker, I used the master word. Uh, I was saying master poker in three minutes because it was fun. And it was, it was fun to, I've always considered the best way to learn about poker t is to find one thing you can master a day, right? And if you do that, eventually the greatest feeling in the world is being at a table and going, ooh, I prepared for this. Ooh, I prepared for that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look at you working ahead. It's like when you, did you ever study for a test and you went in and I mean, you just nailed that test, right? And you kind of went, eh, you felt really good about yourself. And you, didn't, you realized at the end, I shouldn't have even done it for the grade. I should have done it just for this feeling. That's always how I thought poker should be. And I, I, I actually love the process of getting better almost as much as winning tournaments. I, I've been blessed enough to final table WPTs and APTs. I've won W coops and scoops. But honestly, the day-to-day -day study is what I really love. And I really like to transfer that to other players because I think that's what makes this really fun and rewarding. And it's a great way to learn. It's a, it's a great way to win every day. Because even if you have a bad session, if you learn something, it's not a loss. And what I came to find out is there's a way to play poker, which put let's put it in the context of a martial arts studio. Could you get a black belt if you showed up at that dojo four hours a day for six months? Yeah, absolutely. Now, would you be, technically, would you have mastered it? Yeah, you, you would have mastery. Would you be, but it would be up to you what degree of black belt you would want to be. And then that becomes, you go very, very far down the rabbit hole. Well, to get into the top one percentile in poker tournaments is actually, I think used to take about a hundred hours of the right videos and stuff. And I've condensed that to three to five hours and I've used some analytics tricks to get you even further. Uh, just further faster because that's the minimum effective dose stuff that I love so much. And that'll get you to the point where you can handle yourself in a street fight to continue our martial arts analogy. You will have a black belt. You will be able to handle yourself, defend yourself. With my series, you will be able to go into 99% of tournaments on earth and not only defend yourself, but win. Now, the thing I have to be very clear about because honesty is the best policy the difference between me in like the 99.5th percentile and the guy in the, like Fedor Holes in like the 99.9th percentile or Doug Polk in the 99.9th percentile is a bigger difference than me going from 99.5 to an absolute beginner. Like those guys get... Those guys do so much specialized training when it comes to just dealing with professional poker players that that becomes their expertise. But what I've always focused on, which I think is much more fun, is how do you, because there's so many more of these players, is how do you corral the average player? What is the average player doing and how can we take their money? And that's why a lot of really high stakes pros hire me. It's not because I'm a better poker player than them. No, no, no. They're a hundred times better than I am. But before they go into the WCP main event, they're like, Alex, I want to see your data for what the players are doing now. And I want to know what plays you recommend. And I say, okay, step on up. Let's have fun. And over the years, I've refined that class and refined that class and had so much fun with it that eventually I've also gotten to the point where in my classes, I'm repeating myself so much that it's, to be quite frank, it's gotten a little annoying because I'm part of the real fun of teaching poker is getting to learn. I have guys that study artificial intelligence. I have sports bettors. I have lawyers. I have doctors that train under me. And they're, these people are brilliant. 
And the most fun I have every day is presenting my strategies and then fielding their questions. But if I'm just talking the other, the whole time, they're not, I'm not growing and they're only getting a certain amount of content. So I actually was just going to record all this stuff anyway and just give it to my students. And then it kind of hit me like, hey, why don't we make a couple bucks off this at the same time and put it together in this package? So, okay, that's done for the introduction. Let's get into the good stuff. Now, if you did not know off the top of your head that this is where the vast majority of your money is coming from in No Limit Hold'em, you have to ask yourself, why did I not know that? Uh, if you're ever tired in a cash game, you can play those exact hands and only lose 15 to 25% of your profits, depending on your database. I know this for a fact because I went from running away from home in high school to renting condos in Seoul and Seattle at the same time off that strategy, mercilessly applied over more volume than any of my com competitors. And that's not where the data ends. Uh, so what you're looking at right here, this is a, this is a typical distribution of profits. Uh, as you'll see with many players. And what you'll see here is pocket aces making about 800 big blinds for this player. Uh, I, I, picked some, I, I picked some games that were a little tougher uh, in a player that was not doing... This is like the standard player, right? Five big blinds per 100, like standard winning player. Uh, big ace hands, 150 per 100. Uh, big pairs, 442. Medium pairs, 173. And you'll notice medium pairs is like 8A+. Once you get to low pairs, 37 big blinds per 100. And these are per 100 hands, what their average it, uh, earnings are in big blinds. Once you get to suited aces, uh, well, guys running bad, suited connectors, just not, and it just goes down like that because like now you get over here to like suited one gap or negative, suited two gap or barely positive, other suited hands, negative, uh, unsuited aces, negative, suited connectors, negative, this is a very typical distribution. As you can see, all the fancy play doesn't really do much. This guy's a good player. Uh, this guy can play. Uh, but there's one specific instance where you can make these hands profitable. Do you know what it is? If you don't, ask yourself why you're playing these hands. Because most likely you're just multiplying these losses as much as you can, especially if you're opening from early position. If you play online and you haven't seen these filters yet, ask yourself why. Hold a Manager 2 has been out for half a decade now. How did you expect to win without knowing what hands you lose and win with? And let's discuss analytics. First of all, let's, let's discuss how basic I am in analytics so you guys don't think I'm a data scientist. Um, I read, as funny as this sounds, I read the book Moneyball and I said, this is what I want to do with my life. If you guys haven't read the book, we'll discuss it a bit later, but essentially a multi-billion dollar industry, a fun industry, baseball baseball got completely redone. Uh, got complete, there was this huge upheaval because one guy and one Harvard grad, one former player and one Harvard grad started looking at the data and going, huh, check this out, look what we can do. And they started finding ways with this awful team to win games from much better teams. And that was there was something so magical to me about that, like how they worked harder than other people and used, I'm, I'm really big on underdog stories. I always, uh, <laughs> speaking of baseball, I was watching the Dominican World Series at a Dominican restaurant last night. And immediately when I found out one uh, team hadn't been to the World Series in 10 years and they're from the country, I was rooting for them. That's just how I am. So the idea of being able as a job to enable people like you who probably don't have 60 hours a week to put into poker, enable you guys to win from the guys who do kind of have a bad attitude at the tables and bad hygiene and treat everybody bad and kind of dump on this game I love. Oh my God, I was in. Uh, let's, Sean Mead, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, director of analytics at Mead, Mead and Clark Interbrand added, Large publicly available data sets, easier tools, wider distribution of analytics skills, and early stage artificial intelligence software will lead to a burst of economic activity and increased productivity comparable to that of the internet and PC revolutions of the mid to late 1990s. Social movements will arise to free up access to large data repositories to restrict the development and use of AIs and to liberate AIs. 
This stuff is really fascinating if you get reading on it. Uh, Elon Musk has really interesting ideas about it. Uh, to get it into a little more simple terms, nearly every large company has a real-time data warehouse and has more timely data on the economy than our government agencies. That is from Hal Varian, chief economist at Google. You are competing against others in a financial market. That is a fact. An economy. You are a company within this economy. How much data do you have? This, this isn't the minimum effective dose you lack. Only when you acquire this edge will you be able to master tournament poker. Let's begin. What is your edge? Do not regurgitate anything I've said in a previous webinar because today is going to be different. Do you think Chip Reese ever walked into a game and didn't know what his edge was? Where are you making money? What situations are you looking for the most? So this is something I uh, I started uh, I started playing live when I was about fifteen uh, because I couldn't get on. That was God. How many years ago was that? That was two thousand three. Online poker wasn't really a thing. Buying anything online wasn't really a thing. There was no. Uh, that was right around the time. Uh, PayPal and all that stuff was coming along in that teller. And I started playing live just because it was a lot easier being an underage person. And before I went into any game, I asked myself, what's my edge here? And there were some times I went in and like the game was above my head and I couldn't afford it and I didn't have an edge. And I had to either accept that and not walk in or I had to walk in knowing I wasn't getting the best of it. And I was a terrible poker player when I started, but I think just playing that uh 88 eight plus ace queen plus and picking my spots i i was always confused i kept thinking i must be really lucky because i'm making money at poker and all these other people are not making money well the truth was i was just picking good games and i only played hands that uh uh i was only playing hands that made a profit that was it and I was only picking games where that profit was likely to be realized. It sounds really simple, but that's not simple. If you watch in today's games, a lot of people, if you fold King-9 suited from under the gun, they just say you're a weak link. Like, oh, aren't you here to play cards? But we need to know what we're doing, and we need to know where our edge is coming from. Name the sentence that describes the greatest edge. Keep the betting lead, fold bad hands, go for more value bets, fold one pair post-flop to a raise. All of these will make you a ton of money, but I want to focus on one today. Just take a pick. Which one do you think it is? All right, time is up. Keeping the betting lead is surprisingly powerful. All of these concepts could be applied for great profits, but these four words will make you more money than any other four I could select. Let's look at some basic distributions to understand this concept fully. By the way, just to give credit where credit is due, I remember there was a hand where all of the cool 2 plus 2 poker kids were making fun of this one guy on the poker tour back on 2007 or something like that. They were like, oh, God, what a knucklehead. This guy's going to be out of here pretty soon. And uh, that guy said, I just want to keep the betting lead. That's why I raised there. And they were like, yeah, but you're kind of, you're not really getting value from a whole ton. That player was Sorel Mitzi. He kind of blew up after that. This has been a preview for Master Tournament Poker in one class. If you enjoyed the subject matter of this presentation, if you enjoyed the way I come to my analysis in this presentation, if this sounds like the type of training you think would get your game to the next level, Master Tournament Poker in One Class is the product for you. In this one, it is a complete out-the-box program to get you mastering tournaments. We discuss pre-flop raising, three betting, four betting, cold calling, blind defense, how to play each stage of a tournament, flops, turns, Rivers, ICM, there's tons of reference materials. There's several videos that will guide you through it. Not a minute is wasted. 
And that wraps up this part of the training series. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know how I'm doing. And if you learned something from this video, please let me know in the comments what your key takeaway or your biggest aha moment from watching this video was. I promise you, if you do that and then look at the other comments that are there, you're gonna learn a whole lot more. This is the beauty of YouTube. This is the beauty of community. This is how we grow as a team, by sharing our insights, reading what others' insights were, and engaging in discussion to further develop those thought processes. I really hope you're enjoying this learning series. And when you're ready to watch more training lessons like this one, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash grips, or come by my website, www.grips.com, and join Team Grips for exclusive discounts, offers, and training opportunities. We got a whole lot of good ones coming on the way, and I hope that you are someone I will be getting to share them with. Let's get stacking. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it educational and entertaining. If you want to join Team Grips, click on that subscribe button and tap that bell to be notified every time a new video goes live. For behind the scenes updates and motivational quotes from my poker journey, follow me on Instagram. And when you're ready to take one step closer to becoming poker's next champion, click on me in three, two, one, and let's get stacking.